I've been given the job of renovating this old steam engine. I do quite a lot of this. This is a tangy type engine. I'm not sure on the pronunciation. When I Google it, I get many variants. But I think tangy, T-A-N-G-Y-E, is near enough. I'm sure if it's wrong, someone will illuminate me on this. The first thing to do is to give it a quick run to check it out. And it seems to run quite well. It's not really in very bad condition, this engine. The only main problem with it is no power. With even very slight pressure on the flywheel, the engine refuses to turn over, and you can clearly hear the compressed air blowing past the pistons, or maybe the valves, so this will have to be looked into. Meanwhile, I will muse on the pronunciation of the name of this engine, and why it's called that. It's called a Tangy engine, because it's of a specific design. Designed, I believe, by Sir Richard Trevithick, or Trevithick, Tangy, it's getting more difficult as I go along. And the main recurring feature of the Tangy engine design is a one-piece casting for the crosshead and the main bed plate. On screen at the moment, I'm having a quick look at the paintwork on the cylinder, and as you can see, it's coming off very easily just with my fingernail. This will have to be rectified. I'm going to repaint the entire engine anyway. A nice feature of this engine is a very neat water pump in between the two crossheads. And it actually works. To verify this, I'm going to connect some silicone rubber tubing into a pot of water and see how it pumps. There is one aspect of the design I'm not too thrilled about, and that's the way that the water pump is driven from the same eccentric that drives the valve in the steam chest. When a steam engine is under steam, or compressed air, the slide valve has been pressed very hard onto the port face, and this puts quite a strain on the eccentric. And this is compounded by the eccentric driving the water pump as well. Having said all that, it seems to work. But if I nip the pipe, as you see me doing here, the first thing that happens is the eccentric's position actually slips around the crankshaft. I've tried this a couple of times before I videoed it, so what I'm going to have to do is find a very secure way of mounting the eccentric on the crankshaft. Probably what I'll do is drill down and drill a small detent so that the bolt that holds the eccentric to the crankshaft can go into a recess and it will be a much firmer fitting. I would have much preferred it if there had been a separate eccentric to drive the water pump, but this is not so. And as this is a sympathetic restoration, I'm not going to fit any extras to it. I'm going to repair this though, this is a lubricator that just falls off. That's no good at all. It's good to get back to the renovations again. I've had to take a couple of months off to do some serious property renovations. Well overdue, but now they're all taking shape, I can get back to playing with steam engines again. So I'm going to turn the engine round and have a quick look at what holds the eccentric in place. And as you can see, it's a very small bolt. The engine sits on a hardwood baseboard and that's quite good. I'm going to be dismantling the engine to repair the faults and refurbish it cosmetically. That's the end of part one. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.